Pressing new questions are being asked tonight by a highly placed insider about the union slush fund the Prime Minister Julia Gillard helped establish in the 1990s. A former colleague and partner in the Prime Minister's old law firm has come forward with new claims and evidence about the long-running saga. In his first television interview, Nick Steyant-Brown reveals his own concerns and the tensions within the law firm over Ms Gillard's role and provides 7.30 with documents that he claims shed fresh light on the affair. Caro Meldrum Hanna has our report. Back in the 1990s, Nick Steyant Brown was an equity partner with the Labor law firm Slater and Gordon in Melbourne. He made his name fighting high profile cases like the Campaign for Compensation for Papua New Guinea villagers for the environmental devastation caused by BHP's Octedi mine. This decision upholds the political right of the Attorney General to decide whether or not criminal contempt proceedings should be brought. But around the same time, Mr Steyant Brown became embroiled in tensions within the law firm, which then acted for the Australian Workers' Union. At the centre of it were these two men, union official Ralph Blewett and branch secretary Bruce Wilson. They were accused of being behind a fraud in which hundreds of thousands of dollars from developers were paid into a slush fund and then siphoned off. Julia Gillard was a lawyer with Slater and Gordon at the time and Mr Wilson's girlfriend. She helped set up the fund but has categorically denied any wrongdoing. These are defamatory allegations and they are wrong. The saga was revived yesterday by the self-confessed fraudster Ralph Blewett. He returned to Australia after eight years abroad, announcing he plans to tell all to the Victoria Police Fraud Squad tomorrow. I would say to anybody that has any knowledge of this, please come forward and clear the decks. Prompted by the renewed coverage of the issue, today Nick Stein Brown, now a lawyer in Seattle, decided to give his first television interview to reveal what he knows about the slush fund saga. He's provided 7.30 with documents that he says shed new light on Julia Gillard's involvement in a key transaction associated with the fund, the purchase of this house in Kerr Street, Fitzroy. One document is a previously unseen excerpt from an interview between Ms Gillard and her superiors at Slater and Gordon, in which she told them she had first learned about the mortgage on the property in 1995. Another document is a Commonwealth Bank fax addressed to Ms Gillard, which refers to the mortgage details in 1993. Nick Steint brown says the documents raise important new questions. Nick Steyant Brown is now a lawyer based in the United States and he joined me earlier. Nick Steyant Brown, why did you decide that you wanted to speak out about what you knew regarding Julia Gillard, Slater and Gordon and the AWU slush fund? In August of this year it became clear to me that after all these years this story was finally going to come out and Slater and Gordon made a public statement that Ms Gillard had been cleared of any wrongdoing, had taken a very long sabbatical, had resigned from the firm and a meeting room had been named after her. And that was on any view a stunningly incomplete account of the circumstances of her departure. And it was following that that I resolved it was in the public interest to release both non-privileged parts of the transcript of the interview of September 1995 together with Peter Gordon's statement concerning the circumstances of her departure. When did you first become aware of the existence of the slush fund? It was around August of 1995 when it was first brought to my attention. And how was that brought to your attention? I, I can't remember precisely I, I, one or other of the partners uh, came to me and told me uh, what they knew at that time about the uh, involvement of Ms Gillard in the incorporation of the Workplace Reform Association. What action did Slater and Gordon take to investigate the circumstances? Well again uh, I was not the principal uh, or one of the principal partners involved but insofar as I was involved 
there was an interview of Ms Gillard conducted on the 11th of September of 1995 where various matters were put to her concerning both her involvement in the incorporation of the association and her involvement in the acquisition of the Kerr Street property by Ralph Blewett. And it was following upon that interview that Ms Gillard took her long sabbatical and resigned several months later in May of 1996. Broadly, what did Ms Gillard say about her role in that interview? Well, it covered a number of areas, Lee, so it's, it's difficult to give you uh, one statement that summarises what she said. Um, so far as the association was concerned, uh, Ms Gillard claimed that uh, she thought it was a slush fund uh, for the uh, re-election of a union ticket headed by Bruce Wilson. Uh, that she had no involvement in the setting up of any bank accounts associated with the association and she had no involvement with the association otherwise following upon the work she did in relation to uh, its incorporation. Uh, in respect of the uh, property transaction involving Kerr Street, she stated that uh, she understood Mr Blewett was buying the property as an investment that Mr Wilson uh, would be a tenant and she believed that Mr Blewett had the financial resources to uh, fund the purchase together with a loan. What were your concerns about the fund and about Julia Gillard's involvement in its establishment? Ms Gillard uh, stated in the interview that uh, she did not open a file. Uh, this, this was not uh, passing advice to uh, a rank-and-file union member. Uh, this matter involved the incorporation of a legal entity and uh, it was most unusual that a file was not opened. Fees were waived in relation to the work that was done on the file. Uh, then there was the question of her involvement in the purchase of the Kerr Street property and the fact that she had understood that a tenant of the property was to be her then boyfriend, Mr Wilson, and that was a relationship which had no, never been disclosed to me. I did not find out about it until August of 1995. And so uh, they were two of the principal matters that concerned me about her conduct. Did all of the partners in the firm share that view? Did Slater and Gordon have an official view about it? There was a spectrum of views across the partnership, and. Uh, Peter Gordon has said that he was willing to give Julia Gillard the benefit of the doubt, so that was one end of the spectrum. Um, I was towards the other end of the spectrum in that I was not readily prepared to give Ms Gillard the benefit of the doubt and I made that clear. There was never any real resolution of that debate in the partnership because as events transpired Ms Gillard agreed to resign. And so it was never necessary for the partnership to resolve itself what action should be taken. In the draft statement that you and Peter Gordon worked on together regarding the matter, Peter Gordon said that trust and confidence had evaporated. Is that accurate? Yes. Uh, as you can uh, imagine uh, from the circumstances that I've just explained regarding her work, in the incorporation of the association and the acquisition of the Kerr Street property, those things taken together uh, removed uh, the trust as between the partners and Ms Gillard. Was Ms Gillard asked to resign? You know, uh, I don't want to sound evasive. I don't have a precise recollection of each and every discussion between the firm and Ms Gillard and, and I was not privy to all of the discussions. Uh, the, the, the best way I can put it is this, there was deep disquiet amongst the partnership about Ms Gillard's conduct and it was never necessary for the partnership to resolve that issue because Ms Gillard herself elected to resign. Today you're releasing an extra section of the transcript of the Gillard interview at Slater and Gordon. What does it show? What it shows is that Ms Gillard claimed at the interview in 1995 that the first she heard about the Slater and Gordon loan for the acquisition of the Kerr Street property was around August of that year. 
So her claim is that the first she heard about the fact that the loan for the Kerr Street property was a Slater and Gordon mortgage was not until August of 1995, the transaction of course having taken place in March of 1993. OK, you've also released other documents. One is a fax from the Commonwealth Bank to Julia Gillard. What, in your opinion, does that show? Yeah, I, I haven't released those documents, Lee. Those documents form part of the conveyancing file, uh, which uh, uh, are, are now matters of public record. Um, so they are from the conveyancing file, which Mr Blewett consented uh, be released and made publicly available. Now, now what those documents show is that there is no doubt Ms Gillard knew of the mortgage from Slater and Gordon in March of 1993. And, and just to give you some examples, uh, she personally arranged for the mortgage insurance for the Kerr Street property through the Commonwealth Bank and a letter was faxed to her on March 22 of 1993 from the Commonwealth Bank marked for her attention noting that the insurance had been renewed and further advising that the Slater and Gordon mortgage interest was noted on the policy of insurance. What do you believe is the significance of the facts compared to the statements that Julia Gillard made in the interview? Well it's, it's a matter for others to make judgments about the credibility of uh, Ms Gillard's statements. What I can say is this, that there is absolutely no doubt that Ms Gillard not only knew of the Slater and Gordon mortgage in March of 1993, but was specifically involved in taking steps to facilitate that mortgage. Now, f that's, a, that's, that's a matter of documents, it's not a matter of assertion or hearsay. Now, you then have a situation where two and a half years later, in September of 1995, Ms Gillard is asserting that the first she heard it was a Slater and Gordon mortgage was in August of 1995. Now, it's up to others to make the judgment about her credibility. Do you accept that there's no evidence of any wrongdoing on Julia Gillard's part? You know, I have tried to avoid making those sorts of judgments. Uh, my, my role is a limited one and, and I've been assiduous in so limiting it to simply give what access I am able to uh, to an accurate account of the circumstances of Ms Gillard's departure in 1995 from Slater and Gordon. And I, I leave it up to others to make judgments about wrongdoing and uh, relevance and, and so on. In August, Julia Gillard held a press conference and answered every question put to her. Do you believe that she's answered all relevant questions? Well, uh, again, I'm not uh, really sure that that's a judgment uh, for, for me to make. I think that's best made by, uh, by the public and by political commentators. Do you have any sort of personal grievance against Julia Gillard? No, uh, not remotely. I, uh, uh, I have never spoken to her, to my recollection, uh, since uh, she uh, left the firm uh, and officially uh, resigned from the firm in 1996. And prior to that, I never had the remotest personal issue with her. Nick Steyant Brown, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. This afternoon, 7.30 invited the Prime Minister to join the program tonight, but she had prior commitments. Her office sent a response to questions in writing. Prime Minister Gillard's spokesman says the file shows that Ralph Blewett was personally dealing with the Commonwealth Bank. Ms Gillard has no recollection of seeing the correspondence from the bank. Ms Gillard stands by her statements in the Slater and Gordon interview as her best recollection of events. Her spokesman says there's no contradiction to any, in anything that we put to her office. She didn't personally arrange for the mortgage insurance for the Kerr Street property and Julia Gillard's relationship with Bruce Wilson was not unknown within the firm. You can see the full respons response on our website.